Well, I've got maybe like another seven hours of Bastard Bonds to edit. Uh, it's currently October 27, 2016. I've got the rest of this week already po- uh, scheduled, and the rest of next week already scheduled, and like I said, about seven more hours to edit. I was going to actually do some Omnilink and catch up to that to make episode three, but it looks like my saves got wiped and a patch that just came out today. Uh, I don't have the time to play and get up to the point I was at before, and then do recording, because I have a very limited window in which I can record. The last time we left off, I believe we had just gone to Greenback Shipyard, talked to the dude. So here's what I believe we need to complete. Uh, we need to go to Luntime Lighthouse. We already cleared this earlier. The reason why I didn't keep the save is because I wasn't sure I did this part correctly. This beacon appears to be magical in nature, but there's currently no mana powering it. There's ample mana present, but you didn't manage to align it with the crystal. Another attempt may be in order. The beacon flickers to life, its facets shining brightly through the barred windows. This lighthouse should now be visible from a very great distance away. By doing this first, I should be able to get Captain Logan on my team now that I will meet him later. Or right now, actually. I don't know if this is the team I'm supposed to meet him with. I guess it probably is. Dwarfshire Overwatch. The road here ends abruptly at a stony promontory. Perhaps there was once a structure here, or else a landing for small boats. Let's uh, proceed. Captain Logos sits here alone, smoke trailing from a pipe clenched in his teeth. When he notices your approach, he stands and adjusts his hat. So this is it. Time to get off this rock and never come back. Logos takes a deep breath and gazes up at the sky for a long moment. Come with me. Logos leads you to a secluded cove. And there, anchored in the still water, sits an impressive schooner. I think that's how you say it. I have no idea. After a day of loading supplies and preparing the ship for the voyage, your crew rows the boat out into the calm shallows, and Logos gives the order to set sail, bound for the orc nation of Sarath. The wind fills the sails, and the shore drifts further away, as you finally leave the forsaken island of Lukat behind you. You quickly lose sight of the shore, and however, when the sky goes dark and the water turns suddenly, f- when the sky goes dark and the wa- what? You quickly lose sight of the shore. However, when the sky goes dark and the water turns suddenly, fell. Okay, there we go. Took me a moment to stumble over that. Out of nowhere, a ferocious current surges and flashes of lightning stab the sky. A jealous force of nature protesting your escape. It is a familiar echo of the night you were first brought to the stocks. Logus begins barking orders, but his voice is being drowned out by a furious wind, and your inexperienced crew is quickly overwhelmed. The waves are growing more violent, and as the ship reels, Lero, Liario, Therese Berg, and several others are thrown overboard. Against such a mighty squall, there is little you can do but watch. The ship shudders and is dashed against something solid, and perch just flies out from beneath your feet. You drift through the rain for what feels like forever. A flash of angry lightning decimates the main mast, and you catch a glimpse of Locus's red coat fluttering as he too is thrown skyward. Then your body crashes hard against the water, and all is darkness. Uh, that better not mean that those characters are lost forever. Your body is dashed hard against stone, and you are suddenly jarred to your senses. You cough half of the sea out of your lungs and onto the floor of the grotto, till every part of you burns with pain you are alive and breathing. You have no idea where you are, however, and it appears you are alone and without a torch. I've got the golden mask. Also, I'm stealthy. Yeah, and of course, Brand is also a beast. High rocks. Oh yeah. There is a chute in the chasm above you here. You are able to climb up through it by using these high rocks as a stepping stone. You find yourself in a sprawling labyrinthine tunnel with no indication which way it might lead to an exit.
The statue has an inscription around the base. It reads, The color of blood is pleasing to my eye. I will watch as you suffer and die. I suppose, I mean, if I just walk and I just lose 15 hit points. But let's try to solve this puzzle, like, the normal way, or however you want to talk about it. Don't... I guess maybe I'll just proceed on for now. And maybe that'll open up. The floor is laid out in a ceremonial medallion. Words are carved into the outer ring. Gloried one in sunken sea, Lord Leviathan is he. Hear our voices dry above, echo through the bright in our love. You spot a small book resting on the corner of the table. There is a loud rumble from the other room. The book falls off the table and onto the floor. The temple behind you is beginning to fill with water. There's no going back now. You scramble up the sloping chute in the darkness as the water continues to slowly rise behind you. The climb is difficult in the dark, but gradually, the sound of water fades further behind, and the stale, dank air gives way to a cool draft. A moment of searching reveals a crack of moonlight shining through some loosely piled stone. Carefully, you pry some of the stones loose and manage to make a hole big enough to squeeze through. You have come out at the base of a rough seaside cliff face. The ocean has become calm once again, and the sky is clear and bright, near, nearly blinding after your truck through, these dark, through the dark tunnels. There are several small fires on the rocky beach in the distance, hopefully other survivors of your band. You make your way down to the beach and toward them. When you arrive, you find Moria and the others, and she seems unsurprised. Though there were a number of injuries, almost everybody appears to be alive and accounted for. It's like the island didn't want to kill us, she says. It just wanted to keep us. What the hell is going on? You share your account of the strange temple you found in the grotto, and Moria shakes her head, hers head in disbelief. Leviathan? Is that why they push prisoners in on small boats for a distance? Why they don't care if you get out of the stocks? And this Leviathan? It sank our ship but didn't kill any of us. What is it doing? By the time night yields the morning, the only person who hasn't turned up is Logus. You and a few of the others search the beach by daylight, but there's no sign of him at all. He's probably drowned, Moria says. You leave a crude mark on the beach in case he turns up later, but you fear that Moria is right. You and others pack up whatever salvage you can carry to prepare for the trip back to your stronghold. Curious what the Dink Grotto is, but let's see if I have my whole party. Um, where's Le there's Leario, where's Therese Berg? 
There's three spirit. Okay, so they're here. I'm assuming that's all of my people. Um, I'm gonna do a real quick save and load just to make sure. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and, uh, I don't know. Just to save and load and real, just, just real quick to make sure I didn't lose anyone. Yeah, band of 46. I don't even need to load. I will check out this is this is this is the this was the wa cave you washed up in. There's no reason to go back inside that watery death trap. Yeah, I'll go ahead and bring Brit. Yeah, I will bring Brit also. It's fine. Really not necessary to bring everybody up, but hey, why not? Captain Logos sits here on the edge of the bed, clutching at his side. He has bandaged himself, but he's not looking well. You! I thought for certain you'd all drowned out there! I was thrown clear of the ship and I saw him. The thing what sunk us. It was all dark and churning, but I saw him. Then I spied this light, so I swim toward it for all I'm worth. Logos laughs a bit, and then winces, obviously in pain. Figured I was dead, but I found dry land again and made my way up here to this lighthouse. Whoever lit this thing saved me life, or what's left of it anyway. A serious expression takes over Logos' face as he looks up at you. I'd like to come with you. You're my crew, after all, but me belly was torn open on the rocks. It ain't bleeding too bad right now, but every time I stand up and move around, it gets worse. Bring me one of them gold potions, alright? That should get me on my feet and in fighting shape again. You got the potion? I know those ones are rare, but I don't think anything less is going to do the trick. You hand the golden filter to Logos, and he carefully uncorks it and downs it, careful not to spill a drop. Logos gingerly peels away his bandages, revealing his smooth, rugged flank unmarred by injury. He whistles and slaps the bare skin. Damn, that's the good stuff, isn't it? I'm a man of my word, as you know. You just say the word and I'm with you. There are some basic supplies here, but nothing really worth lugging around, I think. And here I thought this was just the issue of the sea keeping us here. I never stopped to wonder why it was this island and not another one. We're sitting on top of a goddamn Sudum Kach. Of course we are. Why wouldn't we be? How did nobody know about this? I'm anxious to leave. Been holed up here for too long. There's a way to defeat it. There has to be. We'll figure it out. Captain Logos has joined the party. And that's why I brought Brit in. I will need my team, I think. Yeah, I need to bring them all back downstairs. And the only reason I brought them up was just, you know, because there's going to be dialogue. I figured, hey, you know, they can be part of it. But now I need to bring everybody back downstairs. Oh, and the guy who saved your life at this lighthouse? It was me. back to his town grab his uh, grab grab his equipment Let's see if anybody has anything unusual to say probably not good day to you captain oh they do good to see you captain will your friends be needing a place to stay tonight no but thanks for the offer we'll be off again shortly I see. Well, do take care of yourselves. What are you up to now, Logos? Trying to save us all. Someone's got to. I've heard that before. I'll stick to saving us from hunger and exposure. Thanks. I'm worried about exposure. You might want to put a few more clothes on. I guess I won't be coming back here for a while. Let me just grab some of my things. Yeah, you were planning on sailing off forever. You, you weren't going to be back anyways. To 
The Captain's Cutlass is critical 10, threat 5, but blade physical 20% increase. But the most important thing is Blade Sweep. For his armor, he has 20 protection, 10 evasion, 25 threat. It's worth claiming him in your party just for the gear, if nothing else. I'm not a new face, I'm the captain! There's one other book I did I didn't bring to the Tome House, that's the Shadow Song. I was saving the Fastad's archive, which has the Shadow Song, which is a cool weapon. I, I'm saving it for when the game actually tells me what the code is. I already know what the code is, because, you know, I'm, I use the guide, but I figured I'd wait until the game actually tells me. This looks like it may have once been a bookseller's shop. It appears to have seen it recent use. So there's still one book I, he's not able to tell me about. What I mean is you can bring him stuff and he, he buys it or talks to you about it. A slightly deranged looking man putters around the building. When you catch his attention, he stands up straight and flashes a bright smile. Welcome, welcome. You don't look like the sort of to spend a lot of money on books, so I'll ask straight away. Have you ever seen a copy of a book called Sumptuous Garden? It's exceedingly common, I've noticed. I've also noticed that all the copies I've found are slightly different, almost as though every printer made unique changes. I'm trying to discover if there's an original core version. Call it a pet project, if you will. If you come across any copies of the Sumptuous Garden, bring them to me, and I will give you a good price of them. Aside from that, if you'd like me to look at anything unusual, I'd love a chance to give it a once over. Oh, hello, Gun. Have you found any books for me? Sell your copy? Yes. Oh, magnificent. I'll warrant this, this is more than you'd get from any other vendor. Thank you again. Found any books for me? Show the sunken prayer to the bookkeeper. Where on earth did you find such a thing? Remarkable! It must be centuries old. This is this book right here, The Sunken Prayer. I found this in the, uh, the watery cave or dang cave or whatever. After the shipwreck. It is very badly damaged, but with any luck, a bit of catalyst will bring the ink residue out enough for us to read it. I'm sure I have some around here somewhere. Give me a moment. The bookkeeper carefully applies a foul-smelling fluid to a few pages of the book with her soft brush. Ah, uh, yes, here we are. Most of it is lost, but I've managed to pick out enough to get a vague idea. It appears to be a series of prayers and rituals devoted to a being called Leviathan. What's more, it appears that these rituals and prayers are reserved only for royalty. Curious. This Leviathan is the jealous master of our fates, it says. He is a living part of the island who allows life or death, prosperity or suffering, only at his whim. It's rather bleak, isn't it? If there really is some connection between Leviathan and the monarchy of Lucat, you may find more information somewhere inside the caldera. There are bandits and worse swarming the ruins of the noble manors and the slums of the capital, but if you're lucky, you might find something they overlook. After all, bandits care more for gold than for print. The royal castle, or some other place where the royal family might have spent time, would be your best bet. The rest of the book, I'm afraid, is well ruined, but disturbing as that was, I'm glad to have had the opportunity to see it. Let me give you a little something for the privilege. And then he keeps the book. Oh, hello, good. Have you found any books for me? Show the Grimoire Halix. The bookkeeper? I've... Sever I have several books that make reference to this one, but never imagined that I would actually see it. I'm almost disappointed. I expect something grander, perhaps. No matter. Halix was an experiment of sort. An attempt to weave Lux and Pox together in a harmonious way. Whether or not the experiment was a success is perhaps up for some debate. Halix ends up being neither Lux nor Pox, but something more like Arcus, the most basic magic used by trainees. It is, however, a violent spell, causing a large, damaging explosion on its target. Something you may find interesting, is that unlike other large area magic, Halix does not cause lesser damage to those further from the blast point. If you target the most magic vulnerable enemy in a group, its magic resistant fellows will be injured just as badly. If you are skilled enough to know the secrets of Arx Arximum, you can expand the explosion of Halix even further. Fearsome indeed. Oh 
Oh goodness, where did you find this? The spells on these pages feel almost as if they're trying to cast themselves, like they need only the slightest push. Solaris harnesses the power of the sun. To most creatures, this simply means violent flames, but to undead creatures such as zombies or vampires, the results are especially violent. If you ever run into large hordes of zombies or skeletons, Solaris will make short work of them, exploding one and catching many others in the blast. Hey, yeah, I, 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 I kind of wondered if it could show these other books. Max is the magic of chaos and destruction. With this, your allies' attacks will throw enemies off balance, or you can inflict pain that limits the effectiveness of healing. Shipshifters and innocents are especially vulnerable. I can feel the power in this book without even reading it, though. That's strange. All the pages are there, but it still seems incomplete. I wonder what's missing. Huh. Alright, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do a couple of real quick errands just to get other books here. Um, so I'll do that. I'm, I'm not gonna drag you through it. I'll need to get some gems and stuff to do all of this. Make sure there's nothing else. Yeah, let's bring some other books. Let's go find something else. Show the Shadow Psalm to the bookkeeper? That's this book. Claimed from a Fastad's archive on a successful thwart check. The verses in this book are dark indeed. Insane prayers to alien gods. There is also a name, Fastad. I recall he was once a minister in the old government. There would, this would be fairly scandalous find if that government were still this would be a fairly scandalous find if that government were still in operation. Lux icon, that's this one right here. Lux is the magic of light and of the thundering heavens. You could use this to gift your allies with heavenly grace or daze your enemies. Demons and the dead fear it, as I understand. Show the Nyx icon to the bookkeeper. That's, uh... Here we go. Nyx is the magic of eldritch mystery and transformation. With this book, you can improve your ally's spells or pin your enemies beneath a magic nexus. Works especially well against demons and animals, I'm told. Whoops. Rex is the magic of life and wild animal power. You can use this to improve your allies' physical attacks or to impede your enemies' movements. Effective against undead and shapeshifters especially. Oh, you're dead, Max. Pox Icon. Pox is the magic of death and pestilence. It can cloak your allies in oily shadows, making them hard to see, or infect your enemies with withering poison. Animals and innocents particularly fear it. So this is the arcane tome, and the next is the next level. So level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4 book. Taboo Manifest. This is interesting. I can't say I understand all of this, but there are clearly some glimpses of mad genius here. A few holes still, but if you can close them, you have an object of real power. A few spells, handwritten by a mage it seems. It might be part of a larger volume, but it should be useful on its own. It's a bit hard to make out most of this. It seems to be excerpts from a spellbook. It might be more useful if you could find more of them and compile them. And that should be it. I've shown them every book that I've ever thought about. And the Shadow Psalm is not something I actually have on my playthrough, so... Uh, when you when, when I continue the game, I won't have it. I just ran over to Fuss Thoughts archive and grabbed it real fast. And then I went ahead and forged a bunch of books. Uh, the only thing I really needed was to grab a diamond from a hermit. Everything else I pretty much had resources to do. Um, I just threw this on the ground because I'm not keeping this safe. Alright, so that's all I've got time for because my family's already home. Thank you very much for watching Tran Wins, Bastard Bonds. I'll see you next time.